So when I was a kid, I actually lived overseas, and there were just these incredible animals there, elephants, camels, whales, and porpoises. And that really taught me a lot about um, biology and genetics. That just made me really love nature and want to embrace it and understand how things worked. During my early years as a professor, we knew that there was a clock in the brain that controlled our behavioral rhythms, sleep-wake cycles. We thought that genetics or genes uh, might control the clock, but we didn't understand how that clock worked. There had been a lot of work in microorganisms and other model organisms, but very little work in mammals. People thought we were crazy. Uh, it, they actually thought it was impossible to find a single gene that could regulate such a complex behavior. We sort of made a back-of-the-envelope calculation that if we could screen a few thousand mice, that we had a pretty good chance of finding an interesting mouse mutant. We conducted our screen, and we actually found clock mutant mouse. It had a 28-hour clock instead of a 24-hour clock, and that opened the door to discovering what the gene was. The clock gene turned out to be great because it increased our knowledge of how it connects to almost every biological process. We've learned that uh, if you manipulate your rhythms, meaning you disrupt them chronically. This causes a lot of stress, not only in our bodies, but also makes us susceptible to obesity, diabetes, immune function deficits, and even increases the incidence of cancer. One of our great interests now is actually understanding the genetics of human sleep disorders. Sleep has been a real mystery for centuries. We really don't know why we have to sleep, but we do have to sleep, it's a vital function. And sleep is really doing a lot of different functions that we don't think about or might not be aware of. There's really growing evidence that sleep is really linked to neurodegenerative disorders. And so, for example, some proteins, such as the Alzheimer's protein A-beta, which leads to plaque formation, is thought to be cleared every night by a special system in the brain. The sleep field has a more of a clinical tradition, and the clock field has a more of a basic science tradition. And so through the O'Donnell Institute, we had this unique opportunity to bring those two fields together so that we can really take advantage of our knowledge of genes and clock genes, apply it to the sleep system, and then use those discoveries to try to improve our ability to treat sleep disorders as well as circadian disorders. Well, I think one of the great challenges for us is for our work to translate into medicine and improving the lives of individuals. That's one of the ultimate goals uh, for us in the future. <laughs>